board and resolving issues for the <laughs> service number, number one. Um, uh, so one of the one of the opportunities with a lot of this stuff is being able to figure out ways of automating your data to create efficient modeling strategies. What we saw at the beginning was a two-dimensional drawing uh, developed in AutoCAD, uh, and then using uh, tools like Rhinomo, Dynamo, um, kind of creating these new processes that allow you to start to migrate this information into the building information modeling environment. So that was taking a two-dimensional drawing, and what you saw there, um, using a, a combination of Dynamo, Rhinomo, which is a workshop I'm running there this afternoon, to actually create and kind of update uh, that drawing into the start of a three-dimensional uh, building information model. Kind of tying together this process, uh, thinking about the workflow in, in, in new ways to arrive at as, as, as a result. We can start to take data apart. This isn't a visual programming uh, environment, but it's it's something that starts to, to tie into a lot of this. Um, this idea of being able to, with all this data that we're now front-ending into a process uh, that we want to start to use to inform our workflow, how can we begin to make sense of it? Um, really interested in ideas of data visualization, uh, leveraging data sources, being able to track what we've got in the process. This is a very cool uh, tool called Tableau, kind of taken from the, the um, heavily used in finance uh, and accounting, um, but here applied to a, a complex building program to really understand kind of the various measures and metrics, and then uh, kind of helping a client understand what they have uh, in their current facility, and then what you're seeing over there on the right-hand side are example visualizations of key metrics, uh, post-occupancy data visualization, and, and things that uh, leveraging those sources, making sense of them, providing levels of certainty. And so by kind of combining these things together, um, we, can, we can start to use use this information in the This is a dashboard I created for uh, a pursuit um, that was dealing with the program, interfacing with a parametric model, um, and tracking programmatic considerations of, of the project as they were kind of developing uh, their information. And then at the end, they had a communication tool for the client. We can then start to take this information and do some really interesting things with it um, three-dimensionally. Uh, here are all the spaces of that program mapped out in, in space. Um, this is a very complex kind of combination of lab and hospital. Um, every space is mapped out, color coded, uh, taken apart, so we can start to do really certain complex of this stuff. The next part of this is, is, is an area that's really interesting to me, and that's studying relationships. This is using a, a, a previous animation was done with Brian Grasshopper. This one is also a Grasshopper animation. Taking the same program instead of studying relative sizes, studying the relationship between departments and how they kind of sit in an overall hierarchy of buildings. So this is the, the building organized by level, department, and down into space, and kind of this sort of more spider web um, type of structure. Energy and simulation. Um, we're now seeing the, the use of simulation tools. Um, analysis tools be front loaded to the to the process in the process. Um, tools like Dynamo, Grasshopper, these visual programming tools kind of allow us to build these connections and create iterative design scenarios. This is a an energy model um, animating over 365 days of analysis, um, kind of showing how that building is being loaded, and then having that model then tied back into a dashboard to allow for some of that data to, to become clear and relevant to, to the overall design process. So being able to take that information from the analysis and use it to kind of inform the overall approach. And finally, another, another kind of data bits exercise um, using visual programming to start to take apart very large data set. This is the app. These are the ASHRAE design conditions mapped out across uh, the globe. Uh, so where we can start to look at various trends in that data, um, kind of create uh, visuals that begin to express this data in, in different ways to where it's no longer just a table that we have to kind of scrub through, um, but it's something that becomes very uh, visual and, and understandable. So we're looking at wet bowl, dry bowl, kind of design criteria that's being captured in all these other stations uh, in the world. So the fun fireworks uh, fireworks kind of data, visual programming, uh, narrative is 
is an interesting one to me. Um, it's something that I've been kind of intimately involved in for the last um, eight years of my uh, professional career is starting out in design and consulting. But I've always been a little, um, a little, I would say annoyed, but you know, there was somewhat of a misalignment between the, the process that that was kind of being implemented in firms and the tools that were available. And I, you know, I, I like to actually like point my a lot of my emphasis towards the idea of project management and what do these tools and workflows really mean for the management process of of, um, of, of developing architecture. I recently released an article through my blog um, and got published in Architect Magazine on the use of Agile and Scrum uh, as kind of methodologies that are being adopted within the world of IT and software development. I highly encourage you guys to talk to uh, our friends at Autodesk and Graph um, Soft and anyone here that does programming to talk about this. I won't go into too much detail other than say that one of the main areas I'm looking at is how we can begin to not only just apply cool things like visual programming to the design process, which really stem from the idea of using software development in practice, but how can we also apply the working methodologies <coughs> of the IT world uh, to how we actually manage a project um, and bring a project in on time and on budget. So a couple of things I'm, I'm working on right now um, with um, my clients, one of my clients being HDR, who is doing amazing work in attempting to transform their, their business process to really focus on innovation and design, is really look at business strategies and roadmaps for how one can start to take the ideas that are going to be explored in this conference and actually apply them to practice, but also let them form the way that a company is managed and organized. Lots of really cool stuff happening here, um, working with them to develop road mapping opportunities, really strategize on various resources, Done. I like this picture because it starts to signal a very different group than you'd expect sitting in front of a, a uh, group of computers on the grasshopper. These are executives in a 1,500 person architecture company trying to figure out what all this means. And I think we're, we're starting to see this uh, happen in organizations around the world. They're doing some awesome stuff with that from a leadership perspective. Applying Scrum to building teams uh, is an area of interest of mine and one that I'm working with very some clients to, to implement, not only on building projects but on internal initiatives. One of the things I always uh, see firms struggle with is how can they get momentum going on internal initiatives to really kind of build out resources, build content, build learning opportunities internally for these kinds of concepts. Uh, so one of the, one of the uh, things that we're doing at HDR is implementing uh, Scrum for their internal design technology team map out initiatives, take those initiatives forward and see them to completion. Along the way, measuring knowledge of their staff. Um, this is a uh, methodology of workflow that, uh, and kind of report structure that I helped help them put together uh, that actually went through, helps them go through their uh, staff from office by office, get ideas of how project managers, how designers, how design principals are uh, using uh, these technologies, how aware are they of the process, and then set some, some tactical recommendations to help kind of move that process forward in the organization. And then building resources. So one of the things I don't think anyone can underestimate enough is the power of taking the complex ideas that are going to be explored in this conference and making them palatable to a wider audience, encouraging adoption, uh, encouraging kind of a level of scalability so it's no longer just about uh, one or two uh, really cool uh, people in the company that are uh, doing this really sophisticated stuff, but how can we actually allow this information to come embedded in the design so templates, building samples, and workshops, uh, all goes into this, this bigger strategy of, of computation and visual programming and knowledge resources in general. So a quick pitch on kind of things that, that, that I'm doing. Um, strategy, uh, education projects, a lot of strategic work right now, workshops, other people on projects, and Please follow me on Twitter, um, Facebook, and all that good stuff. Hopefully that was informative. Uh, hopefully, uh, sorry for the technical troubles along the way. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I seeing some of you this afternoon uh, in the Rhino workshop. Happy to do have time for questions. Yes, you do. Three to five. <laughs>
Scrum is a form of agile project management. So a little bit of background on, I think in order to kind of get into that discussion, we have to have a look at the history of project management, specifically in the <coughs> software development IT, where you might have, uh, normally we think about some kind of project schedules and project management schemes existing on large timelines, phase development. I assume you just have some or something? Uh, into rugby. So a scrum, a scrum in a scrum in rugby is when you get all the uh, players together, that are kind of moving the ball inch by inch, um, and a team effort. So it really kind of focuses on teams and um, you know, uh, collective push towards the goal. Sorry, cool. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain.
station is just, just a giant table of you know tracking you know various temperatures, means, max, means, um, and that was taking that data set, locating it on on the map of the world, and then playing with uh, visualization techniques to really start to make sense of it. Cool. What would you do? I'm just having fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a somewhat more fundamental question. Um, when it comes to learning this kind of software, you talked briefly about um, making it a little bit more palatable for learning. Um, how, what are your thoughts on having a sort of background knowledge in computer programming or something like that? <coughs> like some adjacent kind of knowledge that might support it in a different way. Do you think it's essential, uh, just purely beneficial? Or <coughs> it could be beneficial. Um, I think I'm speaking for myself. I don't come from any kind of computer programming background. I just saw applicability to the design problems I was dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. I think the biggest thing for me is, is figuring out for a company, for an organization, for a team member, um, there's this great stuff out there. Where are my goals on, on the project? And using those goals, can I rethink how I'm working with some of this stuff? The goal-centric, thinking about the why, why am I going to do this, is to me the most important part of, every, of all of this. And then once you know why you're about to do something, uh, then the, these other skill sets, I think, fall in place. And I know I need to go take some Python support. So maybe I need to partner up with a computer programmer to realize that goal. Um, but you know, I, don't, I don't necessarily think that with the, the um, introduction of these new, process, uh, these new processes um, uh, and the new tools that are there to support it, that computer science or software engineering or background in any of that stuff is is, a, is an essential component. Um, I think designers can start to use this. It's kind of cool. That's kind of interesting. Do you, have, do you have any comments on open source and where you see open source fitting into this project management environment? Um, it, it, you know, open source is is an interesting concept. I have I have released open source tools myself. Um, Rhino being one of them, Slingshot being another. Um, very interested in that. I think from a you know in a software development context, um, it, it it's the thing. Dynamo being a great example of a, of a tool that's being adopted that is open source. Um, in the architecture industry, I think that can have other meanings, um, and I think that we're still in the formative stages about figuring out what that really means for I would say an industry that is. Yeah, I, I would characterize as being somewhat insular and very protective of intellectual property um, and, and uh, resistant to kind of sharing things around. Um, I think we're starting to break those barriers down with these tools. I think the generation of, of architects that are coming into practices are starting to break those down. I think it's exciting. I think the way that we move the industry forward is, is through sharing of knowledge, um, sharing of technology, uh, sharing of Details. I mean, I think this this all this all comes down to how can we make a better environment. I mean, it, I mean, some of some of this stuff can kind of look very scary, right? Kind of does like we'll see spaghetti diagrams all day uh, that you know, only the author is really going to know what uh, what's going on. Um, I think that the, the way that this stuff starts to break down is a lot of the I think as new people start to enter into the profession, um, we're going to start to see a shoring up of capability, and um, as people. Start
certainly see the benefits of a lot of this. Either people are going to invest in talent um, and see the, the opportunities of leveraging that talent. They may, you don't need to necessarily know it yourself. I think it's more about if you're a project principal, being able to identify where the opportunity is. Like, wow, this this uh, this intern or this uh, this new person that's coming onto my design staff that really knows visual programming and computation. I've got this project. Uh, the client's uh, goal and opportunity for value is X. Um, I'm going to position this person in a, in a, in a role that um, is may, may ten years ago have been very atypical. I don't want this person doing red lines. I want this person building algorithms. That's that's where I think the the I think that's what we're going to start to see a bit of a bit of a conventional uh, or traditional or mainstream practice. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you.